read me romance read read me romance read me romance read read me romance you could take a look in a book that's fine or you could sit back relax and unwind and read me romance read read me romance welcome back lady listeners hey lady listeners welcome welcome to a new week at read me romance we have a brand new book from Ophelia Martinez called Palpitation. This cover is I know. so fucking sexy. <laughs> when I opened the email, you sent it to me because you forwarded me everything and I did the website stuff. And I, I was like, oh, whoa, wow. Yeah, Happy it's Happy 4th of July. Because <laughs> 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 it's got, it's, there's an American flag on it, but it's like draped over this handsome, it's, handsome it's man. It's super sexy. <laughs> yeah, it's hot. So, yeah, when she sent everything, I was just like, damn, she's got this ready. Let's do this. Maybe because so, it gave me Captain America vibes. I was like, oh. Oh, oh. yeah? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was funny, too, because, like, she sent another email, and she was talking about, like, oh, okay, here's, like, da-da-da, here's everything you're going to need for, like, what's upcoming, and, you know, like, oh, don't forget to mention this and that kind of thing, because I'd asked her, like, yeah, just let me know um, what you want to talk about on the podcast, and mm-hmm. everything she sent was, like, super organized. It was. it was all like bullet pointed and stuff and i was just like holy shit well, this is email, incredible like, what, is, what is this it's like an executive email I'm i like, know <laughs> it was really i was like all right this is what we're doing okay so no it looked awesome so that was nice it's always good when authors are organized and so i wrote back i was like can i tell you i love you based on this email alone and she it was just like makes it- easier yeah. for us to communicate that information out to you guys. Yeah, absolutely. It's like the more you give us, the more we're able to say and, you know, talk about all the great things that they have to offer. So it's like the authors that get it, get it. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll talk about Ophelia in just a few minutes and we'll tell you about all her good stuff, but we're going to catch up a little bit beforehand. Um, the last time we met, um, I was going on vacation for a few days. I went to Nashville to see LB who sings our podcast theme song. And I was, it had been, you know, my husband and I talked, I think it had been like at least 15 years since we'd been there together. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. Since we were dating. Cause the last time we went up was for a wedding and we weren't married yet. And I was like, shit, it was at least 15 years then. So it was really awesome to go up and see everything that had changed and let our kids see it too. And go to different places. On the way, though, there's this, um, they just opened up a new one in Knoxville, or it's just outside Knoxville. I think it's like Circleville or something. But the place is called Bucky's. Have you been to a Bucky's? I've heard of a Bucky's. It is. You, this is why I feel like this place is made for you. Because you like Quick Trip. This is like if Quick Trip was Gucci. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is like, <laughs> this is like, elite luxury gas station that's what i would like to refer to bucky's as it's, it's like starbucks made a gas station I, it's not I don't, it's not like star it is fancy i mean it's like it's it's still a gas station but you go in and it's it's kind of like a mix between i'd say target it's like more upscale than walmart yeah it's like a mixture between target and quick trip but it's like the best of all of it like quick trip could never with yeah. this Bucky's. Damn. No, but they I like, it's, a, it's, a, I looked, I don't know if there's, I don't think there's one near. Oh, me, there's not I one tried, around me. I tried to look it up and see like, what's the closest one to you. They have several in Georgia. There's one in Kentucky, which is Richmond, Kentucky. That's probably the closest one to you. Okay. But, um, yeah, I tried to look through cause I thought there was one in Kansas city. They put them at major intersections in the country. So it's like, if there's like major highways that cross, that's where they're going to put one because it's the most traffic and they're going to funnel into it. Yeah. This place is gigantic. It's like, it's bigger than, it's probably the size of Walmart, but you go in and there's like this whole clothes section where they have Bucky, the little beaver. He's on everything oh and he's God. so cute. And then they have like regular clothes over there too. I'm like, you just we're just buying clothes. Like anything you can think of clothes in is station? in one section. Yes. Then there's a home goods section for like decorating your homes in a section. Then there's 
like then there's like fun TV section where it's like all this like all these shirts and hoodies and everything based off of TV shows and like stuff. the office and stuff. Yeah, but this was like Yellowstone was the one they focused on when we were in in the one in Tennessee. So then they then you go to the other side, which is food. They have like fresh barbecue they do they make hot sandwich barbecue right in the middle of this thing and they like chop it up and they wrap it up and they slide the sandwiches down so you can just go by and grab a fresh mm-hmm. barbecue sandwich if you want one but they also have a section that does dip and dots you can just go up and ask the lady for dip and dots she also does like fudge um like homemade like candies and stuff then there's a huge like bar to the side that does homemade sandwiches and stuff like that, like deli sandwiches, a big deli. And then one section of it is just beef jerky with like 20 different kinds of beef jerky. Oh, God. Then you keep going. There is a huge coffee bar where you can make your own hot or iced coffee. They have all the different kinds of like creamers and everything else you can get. You make it yourself. So you can make it how you like it. Then they have another section is a wall of ices, just oh. any kind of ice you want. Then they have like hot nuts over in another section. They have cotton candy in another. They have all the Bucky's candies. They make special candy just for Bucky. And they're so good. Like gummy bears, sour gummy worms, everything you can think of. And on the far end, it's like generic stuff. Like there's all your sodas and stuff like when you go into a gas station. I mean, it's just walls and walls. You just spend an hour in there. And there's like 40 pumps outside. So, like, you just pull it to a pump and park. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, we're going in for a while. We'll be back. But, like, it really is. It's so fun because there's one in Orlando. So, we've stopped at that one a couple of times. We've gone to Disney or Universal or whatever. And we were, I just happened to ask. And I was like, I wonder if there's a Bucky in Tennessee. And Kevin looked it up on the way. And he was like, holy fuck, there's one in two hours we're going. And it was <laughs> on, it was on the way, but, like, yeah. it was two hours away. And I was like, holy shit. So we stopped on the way there and on the way back because, and also gas was way cheaper there than everywhere else. It was awesome. So, but it was funny because as I'm there, I'm like, Mel would love this place. (laughs) (laughs) I would get lost in a place like that. You would be happy to be lost in it. Why wouldn't you be? Like you just walk around drinking your icy and then go back and fill it up and then go shopping in home goods section. Like. Like, I have like cotton candy and beef jerky. Yep. Yeah. Oh, th- my my daughter, my oldest one, got a pound of teriyaki beef jerky. Mm-hmm. A pound of it. She wrapped it up in a paper sack under her arm while she was walking around. <laughs> she was like, "I'm good. I got what I wanted." <laughs> I love that. Beef jerky. But um, but we had an awesome time in Nashville. We did um a lot of touristy stuff that I had never done before. And I wanted to ask you, um, do you know what a Goo Goo Cluster is? Like the candy. Have you heard of that? It's chocolate. Like it's like a chocolate peanut looking thing. It's like a cluster. Where it's like caramel? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like pecans or peanuts and caramel or or something like that. So there's a company called Goo Goo, like like baby, like Goo Goo Gaga, whatever. It's that. And they make these clusters. And they've been around since like 1917 or something, but they were from Nashville, I guess, like Mm -hmm. where it originated. So they have a shop downtown and we did a chocolate making class there. And it was so fun. It was like 50 bucks a person, but you go in and you have like this special room and they teach you about like the history and stuff of it. But you go in and you have like this big chocolate mold and you get all this stuff to fill it. And then they help you put chocolate on top of it when you're done so that it pops out. And it's like this chocolate covered mold with all the stuff inside of it that you like. Like again, I put pecans and this marshmallow nugget stuff and caramel and Heath bar and rice krispies. Oh, Heath bar. oh my God. I bit into it and it was like crunchy and gooey. I, it was so good. They kind of, they kind of have something like that at the Hershey factory place where they make a Hershey bar and you can fill it with whatever you want. Yes, that huge. you can go through and like make it. I, mm-hmm. It was so fun. And I realized like afterwards, and it was cool like getting to see, you know, the, getting to know the history and stuff of it and getting to make your own. And it was like a fun adventure. But if you just want to go make your own, they have a kiosk. They have three different kiosks in their store. 
you can walk in and punch him whatever you want. And I know this because on our last day, I made Kevin drive downtown so I could go in the shop and buy two more <laughs> so that I could have them on the way home. Because I know what so we good. have Topsies here, which I didn't realize people didn't have Topsies. That's popcorn, right? Yeah, and it's like yep. it's like the best popcorn. I'll send mm -hmm. it. It's to really good. Sometimes. You sent us some. Like yeah. I've gone to other places and I'll get there like cheddar. I'm like, what is wrong with you? There's popcorn around here. I thought Topsies was like a national thing, but it's not. But they're the only place that you can get like the fresh clusters of stuff. I mean, Either cashews yep. or pecans. I don't want the peanuts. That's like basic. I, I mean, don't like a peanuts. Pecan yeah. Pecans a are really good. Yeah. Or like macadamia ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I need a good yeah. nut. Mm-hmm. I know how you feel. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. But they were, it was really cool. So if you're ever in Nashville, that's something super fun to do. If you don't want to pay the 50 bucks to do the class, just go in and do the kiosk. I think it's like $15 to make one of them, but it's gigantic. I, I ate it over two or three days. It's huge. But it was amazing. And it was, it was a fun experience. It was really neat. But. I didn't realize it was the 4th of July until like... Mm -hmm. Saturday, yeah, the Saturday before, like, and then I realized I was like, oh, she went down there for the 4th of July. <laughs> well, I, we actually went because Kevin was off work. So that was really, what I, I put together, I was like, yeah. Kevin works for the government. It's an yeah. extended weekend for him. It's the 4th yep. of July. Duh. <laughs> yeah. So we had the time off for it. So he was like, yeah, let's roll. But um, when, on the 4th of July, we actually went to this water park. And I know you don't like water, like getting in water and stuff like that. But I will say this was the cleanest, the nicest, the most amazing water park I've ever been to. It was so great. And I cannot recommend it enough. It is at a Marriott property, which is probably why it's so amazing because Marriott's really the best. They do but great. Marriott they always is, does everything great. Yep. The place is called Sound Waves. It is in Nashville. It's, uh, the, it's called the Gaylord at Opry, Opry Land. And this hotel is huge. It has 3,000 rooms. Like, we get, we did a little tour at the hotel, too. You take a little boat ride, and they tell you all about the hotel. It's got 3,000 rooms. It's insane. It's huge. The rooms were fantastic. They were clean. Everything was so nice. Um, and so, yeah, when you book your room, you can, in addition to it, you can buy tickets to the water park. That is the only way you can get into the water park. You can't just go here and buy tickets and go in for the day. You have to stay on property to do it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the way maybe they eliminate just anybody coming to it. Yeah. Like, and they're not being long wait times. They had huge slides. I think there was three or four inside that you like sit on the float and you go down the tubes and stuff. And they had three or four outside. We never waited longer than 10 minutes. That was probably yeah. the longest wait time we had for any of this. And it was 4th of July weekend. Yeah. And I thought, oh, my God, this is going to be so packed and so crowded. And even if it was crowded, I didn't notice it. But they have, like, really nice indoor. They have two different lazy rivers. They have, like, a faster one and a slower one. And it's all inside. And then the outside, they have, like, a big wave pool and, like, a kid area and big water slides out there, too. And I was just, like. This is the nicest because it sounds I, fun. I know. I was like, maybe I'm just used to shitty water parks. <laughs> you know, like, we have I don't oceans know. of fun here. And it's like that kind of. I haven't been in forever. It's not that I hate water, it's that I can't wear my hearing aids. Yeah. And then well, you now can't get water that, in your ears. And either. I can't get water in my ears. So then mm -hmm. I have to plug my ears. So mm -hmm. then it's like, I can't hear, period. Yeah. If I'm You're at just a water be park, deaf all day. I'm, yeah. yeah. I'm essentially deaf all day. Mm -hmm. So I just like, yeah, yeah, I never do it. Well, this is great because like we just got under an umbrella and like the kids got in the wave pool and it was kind of like being in the beach. But I mean, so like my experience is there's a water park at Carowinds that's here and you will see all kinds of walks of life <laughs> this place because it's not expensive to get in. I mean, that part is nice if you want something that's relatively inexpensive to go to a nice water park. That one's not bad, but. It is wild, the people that go. And it's not always, like, nice. The wait times are atrocious, especially in the summer when it is blazing fucking hot. You don't want to stand there holding a float for 30 minutes yeah. in the heat, you know? And then the other one I've been to is the Great Wolf Lodge, where it's like, you guys have one of those, mm -hmm. but it's not called that. It's called yeah, something. It's called that. Is it? Okay. I thought my was dad it, used to do work for them, like do construction right. for them. Yeah. Like the, you're just the in candy stores it, and stuff inside in, of them. Is it Branson? 
Is that right? Is is that where yours is? A brand? No, I have one like over in like right on the edge of Kansas, like twenty minutes from me. Okay, I didn't know if it was like in the same thing. If that was the same water park. Okay, Mm -hmm. so yeah, the Great Wolf, the Great Wolf Lodge. I've been to. Like, it's okay. I didn't think it was bad or anything. It would just wasn't like I didn't walk in and think, oh, this is really clean. You know, Mm -hmm. like I went to this one and I was like, holy shit, this is really nice. Mm -hmm. So that was at least my experience with it, with the Sound Waves place. But yeah, I can't recommend it enough. If you're in in and around the Nashville area, check that one out. And people that live in Davidson County that live in that county, you get 40% off your hotel room. So like I told LB, I was like, guess what? Next time you're booking my hotel room. (laughs) This time I actually, I used my points. So it it was $0 for us to stay. We just had to buy the ticket separately at the hotel since we were staying there. They actually wouldn't let me buy the tickets until I went to the hotel. Cause they were like, they were like, no, we're not fucking around with this. So that was how I had to do it. But yeah. So I, you know, I didn't have to pay anything for a room. Otherwise I would have like let her do it. But yeah, so get you a friend that lives in Davidson County and go up there. It's awesome. So, all right. I don't want to, I don't want to talk too much about that. We have a lot to talk about with Ophelia. So let's discuss what we've got with her. Um, So Ophelia Martinez is actually, um, she was a recommendation by Carla, our um, admin in our Read Me Romance headquarters group. She's one of the admins in there. And I had reached out to her earlier this year because Carla is amazing at, you know, reading diverse romance, recommending diverse romances. She if um, she reviews books for Lit Buzz. So if you go on Instagram and find her, which she's all over, it, it's just Carla Peterson. I've got it on my thing. I know I share her stuff all the time. But um, you can also just go to Lit Buzz on Instagram and check her out there. But she always has these fantastic recommendations. So usually when we're booking for the podcast, I always message her and, and I just ask just in case, like, hey, is there, um, you know, um, an indie author or is there somebody you know that you think could use more attention? You know, we'd love to have somebody on the podcast that maybe just needs a little nudge or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, um, and Ophelia, oh my God, she's incredible. She doesn't need a nut. She's awesome. But, um, Carla actually mentioned Ophelia. She was like, I think you should just have her on. Her books are awesome. She's a, she'd be a great fit for the podcast, blah, blah, blah. And so I reached out and she was just so nice. So yeah, she, we got her on here, but, um, so I was looking through all her stuff earlier and again, it's just so organized and nice. I was like, this is fantastic. Um, she wanted to let you guys know that um, the book you're going to look here today is called Palpitation. It is part of the Heartland Metro Hospital medical romance series. So it kind of reminded me a little bit of like Grey's Anatomy, that kind of thing, where, but it was like the Heartland Metro Hospital. That's where it all takes place. And hopefully um, not everybody dies. <laughs> no, I know, right? <laughs> but it's such a great concept, though. Because that really does give you a ton of people Mm -hmm. and characters to kind of play off of. And what I love about this is that she says all the stories in this series are complete. And they all interconnect, but they're all standalones. You can read them in any order. So I just love that, that you can pick up any book in the Heartland Metro Hospital series and you're good. So, and that's what palpitation is. So if you listen to this today, you get a taste of it and you like it, there's so much more. And so um, she said, keep reading about the Heartland Metro Hospital with Incision, a free novella in the same world. It's a hate to lovers, which I'm sorry, I love that. Hate to lovers instead of enemies to lovers. I just, I thought that was so clever. It's hate to lovers romance with day of the dead and spooky vibes and a dash of mistaken identity. You can read Incision for free when you sign up for her reader club at OpheliaMartinez.com slash free books. And we'll have that in the show notes. Um, This week, she is giving away a signed copy of Diagnosis Amor. It's a collected volume in the Heartland Metro Hospital series, and it comes out July 26th. Um, It includes the following books. So this is in the paperback, and you can go grab it now if you want to or enter the giveaway to grab it. It includes Remission. Um, and with a bonus chapter from remission that hasn't been published before. So there is new content in the bundle. So it's remission, contusion, incision. And she was like, it's three books all in one plus tons of bonus content for each book. Um, she has the like listed out about each book, which I think is so cute too. Remission, she says is 
with a deliciously forbidden age gap and a slow burn. Contusion is book two is with a cinnamon roll hero with a heart of gold. An incision is a complete novella never before published with a dash of mistaken identity and spooky feels. Which I just let she has everything written out so perfect. So it's like, <laughs> yeah. So if you want something specific, she's got you on that. Or if you just want to jump in at any point and enjoy this series, it, this is a fantastic way to do it. So this is the perfect way to kick it off as well. So. All right, we're going to play the first installment of Palpitation, and we'll see you on the other side. Bye. Bye. This is Palpitation by Ofelia Martinez, read for you by Ruby Hunt. For the Ofelati, I couldn't do this without you. Chapter 1. After the longest night shift of my life, I'm dead on my feet when I get home. I kick off my sneakers, and just as I'm about to pull the covers to flop on the bed, my phone rings. I can tell by the ringtone it's work. My call shift is over, so I could ignore it if I wanted to. I would if this weren't my first week on the job as an emergency room resident. Not to mention... Heartland Metro Hospital is my first choice of hospital since I've had to come back home to Kansas City. Working at the hospital in the middle of the barrio that mostly serves Latina patients was the only option when I returned. Hello, I say, my voice gravelly from near sleep. Camila, can you come back in? I recognize Dr. Carolina Ramirez's voice on the line. Though a few years older than me, Carolina and I have a lot in common. We'd attended grade school and some of high school together. At the time, we bonded over our Spanish-speaking insecurities, as well as our desire to one day go to medical school, despite being in one of the school districts with the highest dropout rate of the state. Though I've been excited to reconnect with her, what she's doing calling me after my shift ended, I have no idea. I'm not on call anymore, Carolina. I know. She says with a sense of urgency in her voice that spikes my awareness like a shot of adrenaline, the emergency medicine training kicking in. What happened? I ask, already pulling on a fresh pair of scrub pants. There is an industrial fire, high injury count. Mostly migrant workers and first responders report a high need for interpreters. I panic. Emergency medicine? That, I'm good at. Having to triage patients in Spanish? Not so much. All the no sabo kid teasing of my high school and college years comes crashing against my chest. Carolina, I can't. You can. You're more fluent than you think. Please, Camila, we're going to be spread so thin. It will help if we can take the minor cases at least so that the interpreters can focus on the more urgent ones. The thought of potentially endangering a patient with my lack of fluency in a language sickens me, but Carolina's right. The small troop of professional interpreters can help with the more severe cases, and we can free them up some by taking more minor burns and injuries. I can always resort to the blue translation phones if I absolutely need more help. Okay, at least we have a plan. Taking a deep breath, I motivate myself. I can do this. Be back in as soon as I can, I say. Chapter 2 One of the more seasoned interpreters remains at the ER, but the vast majority get reassigned to the burn unit, which leaves the rest of the Spanish-speaking hospital staff, Carolina and me, manning the incoming cases. I treat patient after patient, getting pulled in a million directions at once, with my earlier exhaustion long gone, I do my best to focus on communicating with the patient in front of me while simultaneously helping interpret for the patient on the other side of the curtain next to me. When I wrap things up, Dr. Johnson hands me a chart. There's no one available to interpret, and with an apologetic smile, he shrugs. Resigned, I take the chart. It seems that today, Carolina and I are seeing patients six to one to the doctors who only speak English. After finishing up with my eighth patient, I'm heading to the computer station to chart my notes when I see him. 
He's wearing a blue paramedic's uniform that looks delectable on his deep brown skin. He's helping wheel in a patient, and his surgical mask covers most of his face. But those soulful brown eyes and the thick black brows framing them give him away. He's no longer the young man I knew eight years ago. He's all grown up, put on about 50 pounds of pure muscle, and his skin is a deeper brown with new lines on his forehead from constant sun. He didn't re-enlist. He's back in Kansas City. He can't be, but he's reading off vitals to the intake nurse, and his voice is unmistakable. That commanding and husky tone is undeniably Leonardo Moreno. Instantly, an image flashes through my mind of steam escaping a tortilla as it cooks. Chapter 3 When the tortillas puff during the cooking process, it signals a woman's readiness for marriage. That's what my mother used to tell me when I was little and would help her make them. I'd keep a fork near me to poke the masa secretly when she wasn't looking. This prevented the steam bubbles from rising inside the dough as the tortillas cooked on the comal. She was superstitious and believed that if someone's feet were accidentally swept over, that person would never marry. Hearing this at eight years old when boys still had cooties, I often dusted my shoes with a broom. All my efforts seemed to have worked. I think about her superstitions a lot. And then I think not of my ex fiance who recently broke my heart. No. I think about the kiss I stole from a boy who just happened to be my older brother's best friend. I think about Leonardo Moreno. The last time I saw him was on my 18th birthday when I stole that kiss. And now he's here, in front of me. I freeze. When he's done talking, the nurse and patient disappear behind a set of curtains, and he's just about to turn away when his eyes catch mine. He mirrors my frozen stance when our eyes lock, but there isn't a hint of the surprise I'm feeling reflected in those dark irises. He already knows I've come back. He knows I've been home for weeks, and he's been avoiding me. Before the stupid tears make themselves known, building in my eyes, I spin on my heel to find the nearest computer and hide my face staring at a screen. When I'm done charting and stand to see my next patient, Leo is long gone. Dr. Carolina Ramirez gives me courage on our long shift. The tall and leggy brunette with curves like the Pacific Coast Highway is admirable, And though only a few years older than me, I know she'll be a great mentor. She showed up to help, even though emergency medicine isn't her specialty. She gave me one of her determined nods that immediately made me stand taller, and we got to work. That was ten long hours ago. We got word we have one last patient incoming. Go home, I tell Carolina. I got the next one. How long has it been since you slept? She asks. I don't even know, I admit. Well, if you don't mind, I'll take you up on it. I was on call before we got called back in, and I'm dead on my feet. I don't tell her I'd been up the whole night for a night shift at the ER, so she won't feel guilty leaving. My heart sinks when the paramedic bringing in the last patient is him. This time, he nods to no response from me. Luckily, another doctor is available to take the patient, and I'm about to turn and get as far away as possible when someone says, excuse me, doctor, can you help my partner out? I look at the other young man in the same blue uniform accompanying Leonardo. At about five foot seven, the young blonde man is holding on to Leonardo's shoulder, doing his best to keep him in place, but looking like he's about to topple over against the strength of Leo's massive frame pulling away. I'm fine, Leonardo says, the first words he said in my presence since I was 18. He's not, his partner says. 
leaned on some hardware at the factory's warehouse and singed his calf. My eyes widen, and before I can think about anything else, I move to grab Leo's arm and lead him to an empty bed. You're hurt? It's nothing. Let me see, I tell the stubborn man. Nothing I can't handle at home, Gami. I smile at him, and he can't see past my mask, but it must show in my eyes because the corners of his crinkle a little. It's Dr. Ochoa. Leo nods. Right. I knew you'd be a hotshot doc one day. And this hotshot doc says, show me your calf. On your belly. I draw the curtains closed, keeping Leo's partner on the other side, and watch as Leo lies face down so I can look at the back of his leg. Don't go checking out my ass or nothing, doc, he says. I peer up at him as I inspect the burn. Are you flirting, Leo? I'd never flirt with my best friend's little sister. And I wouldn't flirt with my big brother's best friend. Your ass is safe, corporal. Or is it sergeant now? Leo grunts, either from my treatment of the burn or annoyance, I don't know. It's nothing now, Gummy. I'm out. I thought you were career army. I thought so once too, but, but, there are other things in life I want more. It takes everything in me not to ask him what that more is, or ask him if he has a girlfriend now, or maybe a wife and kids. I've lived with a perfect memory of him all my adult life, and I don't want to ruin it with something as mundane as the truth. So, you're back home? He says, so are you. I'm sorry I haven't come by to say hi. I heard about your mom, though. Before you got here, I visited her, made sure she was okay. My annoyance fades as it makes way to my memories. Leo's mom was mostly absent, and for one glorious year when he was a senior in high school, he practically moved in with us. And mommy took care of him like she did my brother Andres and me. I didn't know, I say. Thank you for doing that. Your mom was always good to me. And I know Andres would do the same for my mom if I were deployed. I smile, thinking of my big brother on the other side of the world and worried about mommy after her heart attack scare. The good thing is she's doing fine now and you need to tell my stupid big brother to stop worrying. I'm here now, I'll take care of her. Leo snorts. I heard she wouldn't let you move in with her. He doesn't see my eye roll before I dress up the burn after cleaning it and secure it with medical tape. She said she waited her whole life to be an empty nester, and she wasn't taking me back at this point in her life. Leo laughs, long and silky, and it warms my insides. That sounds like her. You can sit up now, I say. Do you need any pain meds? Please, for this little scratch, no. Good. We are quiet for a moment, and he breaks it first after taking off his surgical mask, revealing dark scruff somewhere between a five o'clock shadow and the start of a beard. He looks about as tired as I feel, and I can't imagine how exhausted he must be from running patients in all day. I want to move to sit on the bed and have him lie on my lap so I can let my fingers sink into the inky waves of his black hair. Gummy, are you? He clears his throat. Is there someone? I raise a brow at him and take off my mask so he can see my amused smile. Someone? Yeah, someone special in your life. A partner, a husband. There was a fiance. You're engaged? Pay attention, Mensel, I say, and he laughs. I said there was, past tense. What happened? My mom got sick, 
and he wouldn't leave his fancy residency in Massachusetts for one in the sticks. He did not call Kansas City the sticks, Leo says, mockingly enraged. His words, not mine. I would never disparage my beloved Kansas City. Good, because I love it here. Me too, I say. When I stand and pile supplies on the tray, Leo steps closer to me. His enormous hand engulfs mine in his grip, and with his index finger, he caresses the back of my hand. I missed you, Gami, he says, looking down at my hand in his. There is nothing I can do with that admission. Saying you miss someone doesn't take back time, or change the fact that you never called or wrote to say you missed them. It doesn't change the distance or the years between you. It's futile to think about the past. So, instead of admitting the truth and telling him, I've missed him every day of every week of every year since I turned 18, I clear my throat and say, Okay, soldier, you're good to go. Do me a favor. Leo stands and steps much too close to me. I'd do anything for you, Gummy. Don't get hurt again, okay? He smiles, but it's crooked in a sad way. I won't. Out of scrubs and in jeans and a white tee, Carolina swings by the ER to say goodbye before leaving. She finds me at the nurse's station. So, you saw him? Carolina asks. You saw? She nods. All this time, I say. He's known I've been home, hasn't he? Another nod. Look, she says. I know you had feelings for him once. Are you ever going to tell me what happened before he left for the army? My eyes narrowed to slits. I answer with my own question. Are you ever going to tell me what happened with you and Dr. Medina before he quit? It's unfair to ask about the devastation her career took with a messy workplace breakup, but deflection is my only weapon right now. Carolina winces, letting her signature grace falter for one second before she recovers it along with her tall posture. Touché, Camila. I won't ask again. For what it's worth, if I learned one thing from Hector Medina, it's that assumptions are devastating. You should talk to him. That's one option you have that I no longer do. With that, she leaves. After Leo left the ER, there were no goodbyes or promises to see each other again soon which is why it surprises me when he's sitting on a bench outside the hospital as I'm leaving. What are you doing here? I ask him. Waiting for you? I snort. That's not creepy at all. He laughs. Please don't take this the wrong way, but I don't think you should be driving. I stare at the keys in my hand. Why not? I'm afraid you'll fall asleep. I'm fine, Leo. You don't need to take care of me. Maybe it's the lack of sleep, food, or both, but him walking into my life out of nowhere pretending to take Andres's place as big brother pisses me off. I speed walk toward the garage and hear him jogging softly behind me. Please, Gami, let me drive you home. Aren't you working? I shoot back. Leo shakes his head. Clocked out, off the next two days. You're not Andres, I tell him. I don't want him to be here looking after me out of some warped sense of obligation. I'm not trying to be a big brother here, Leo says as he follows me on my trek to the car. Even if he would have my balls if I didn't look out after you, that's not why I'm doing it. I spin around to face him, stopping on the sidewalk. Why then? I care about you, he says, but it comes out like a question. 
I roll my eyes and head into the garage, hearing his steps echoing behind me. The fourth floor of the garage is nearly empty, and when I get to my car, I feel his brawny arm come around me and shut the door the second I opened it. You're not driving, Gami. Leo, Gami, he teases. You can let me drive you home, or you can order a ride share, pick one. Who do you think you are? I haven't seen you in eight years, Leo, eight. Not one word in eight years, and now that you're back, what? You plan on filling Andres' shoes till he comes home? Leo's eyes narrow, and he scratches the scruff on his jaw. Phones and emails go two ways, Gummy. You're insufferable. I try to open the car door again, and again he slams it. Time to try a new tack. This time I try to dash around the car. The plan is to run into the passenger seat, lock the car from the inside, and escape that way. Before I'm all the way around the car, Leo grabs my arm, and before I know it, my back is pressed against the cold concrete wall in front of my car. A warm and equally hard body pressed to my front. You're not driving, Esquincla, Leo says, his amused smile hinting at the corner of his mouth. His perfect, plush mouth and that full bottom lip I got to bite once. The memory of that lip bite resurfaces as I stare at him. When I drag my eyes from his mouth to meet his eyes, they are full of heat in a way that makes me think he's thinking about the stolen kiss too. The stolen kiss he returned for a minute before he broke it and ran out of my life like a coward. His eyes fall to my lips, and this time, Leonardo is the kiss thief. Pinning my hands above my head in one of his, and his other hand secure around my waist, the first love I ever had steals a kiss right back. As his lips touch mine and his tongue probes my mouth open to let him in, I remember a saying I always heard growing up. Ladrón que roba a ladrón tiene cien años de perdón. Thief that steals from thief earns one hundred years of forgiveness. I find my body melting into his, heating with the pent-up desire my imagination has conjured all the time we've been apart. His hand falls to my thigh, and I lift it to wrap my leg around his waist. With a small jump, I bring my second leg around him and he releases my hand so he can grab onto me. The long and steely presence of his erection swells between us, and through my scrub pants I grind myself against him while he kisses me. With his tongue in my mouth and his fingers digging into my thighs, I move my hips to feel his shaft between my lips, my clit pulsing so much I was so close to coming right then and there. He breaks the kiss, lets my legs gently down, and offers his palm up to me. The keys, please, he says. Dazed, confused, and out of breath, I angrily shove the keys in his hand and get in the passenger side. Most of the ride home, I sulk, sunken in my seat, arms crossed in front of me. We're almost at my house when I finally break the silence. What was that? I ask. What? He asks. Don't play stupid. We both know you're highly intelligent. I'm really not, Gummy. You're the smart one. If you are not a genius, how come you scored a 522 on your MCAT? Leo's stunned expression peels away from the road for a second to look at me, his mouth open with shock. He blinks, then looks back at the road. How did you find out I took the MCAT? Your mom is proud of you. When she heard I was taking it, she said she hoped I did better than you and told me your score. And why didn't you go to med school if you did so well?
And why did no one know you were interested in medicine? You ask a lot of questions. You dodge a lot of questions, I shoot back, making Leo smile. I'm happy to see you're not the quiet, shy kid I remember. I like you feisty like this. I smile until I realize I'm annoyed with him for lying about being home, for trying to stay away from me now that we're both back, for being overbearing and forcing me to let him drive me home, for stealing back a kiss that belonged to me. I cross my arms in front of me again. Ugh, I say with a groan. What is it? I need a shower beer, but of course I'm all out. What the hell's a shower beer? I blink at him. Okay, maybe you are stupid after all. It's just what it sounds like, a beer in the shower. You've never had one? It's the most relaxing thing ever. When he pulls up at my new home just down the street from my mom's, even though I never gave him an address, I take a deep breath so I don't yell. He's known this entire time exactly where I've been. I've got beer at home. Give me five minutes and I'll bring you one. Fine, I say, annoyed. I'll leave the front door open for you. Chapter Four There's a knock at my bathroom door by the time I'm done shampooing my hair. Come in, I say aware that I'm completely naked and only my flimsy shower curtain separates me from Leonardo's eyes. You can set it on the sink counter, I'll grab it. Actually wanted to hand it to you. I grip the curtain to poke my head around and wipe the water off my face. What? I peer down at the bottle he set on the counter. You got a glass bottle? I don't know if you know this, but shower beers are meant to be cans. A glass bottle on a porcelain tub is a recipe for disaster. I have plans for this beer, Doc. I want to ask him what he means, but my eyes roam to his infinitesimal movements as he toes off his shoes and reaches for the hem of his shirt to pull it over his head. Leo got ripped in the army. I'd seen him shirtless many a summer when we were younger, a countless pool days and cookouts where he played soccer with my brother and ditched his shirt to cool off. Back then, his body was already mouth-watering, but it was the body of a boy. Though always fit, the muscles were youthfully long and lean. This Leo, however, has a man's body. Thick black curls blanket his massive pectoral muscles and trail down finely chiseled abs, It's not only the water from the shower making me wet now. I clench my thighs to soothe the throbbing and lick my lips when I get to the Adonis V disappearing into his jeans. He said something. What did he say? I clear my throat and force myself to look him in the eye, only to find him smirking. Unless you'd like me to leave. Tell me now, Kami. Words don't come out so I can only shake my head, don't leave. He smiles when he removes his jeans and finally his boxer briefs. I must have imagined him naked hundreds of times, and his penis about a thousand, but my meager imagination couldn't prepare me for this much girth and length. It almost startles me a little, and I grip the curtain harder when I lose my balance. Leo notices. He rushes forward and holds on to my arm, gently pulling the curtain from my hands. Once I've found my balance again, he reaches for the beer and steps into my tiny shower that barely has enough room for both of us. Glass in here is a bad idea, I breathe out. I told you, I have plans for this beer. It's not safe, I try to argue. I'll be careful. What are your plans for the beer? You want me to tell you? He says with a crooked smirk, pupils dilated to pitch black. I can only nod. Take a sip first. 
He tilts the bottle to my lips without letting it go, like I'm a child. I drink a refreshing sip that contrasts the heat of the water gliding down my skin. Now what? I ask. He steps a little closer until my breasts are almost touching his skin. Bottle firmly in his grip, he extends his index finger to trace the length of my clavicle. Now, he says, I'm going to glide the lip of this bottle down your body. I'm going to trace the curves starting here. His finger stops touching me, and my body wants to throw a tantrum at the absence. Then he caresses the hollow of my neck and drives his touch downward. Then I'm going to glide this bottle down between your perfect tits, down your soft belly. I suck in a breath, feeling his caress below my belly button. Then I'll go lower, the cool glass gliding lower and lower until I can part your lips with the mouth of the bottle. You'll be so wet, baby. I'll rub it against your wet, and then I'm going to have a sip for myself. I'm going to taste your cream go down my throat before I can taste the beer. And then I'm going to kiss you so you can taste yourself on my mouth. I like to think I'm a smart woman, intelligent. I went to excellent schools, graduated top of my class, but when I tell you my brain stopped working, I mean it completely and utterly ceased to function. I mean, he adds, if you're okay with that. I snap out of it. Dirty talking Leo blindsided me, but I'm more than up to the task. I'm okay with it, on one condition, I say, forcing myself to look him in the eye. What condition is that? You stop asking for permission. For the rest of today, you have blanket permission to do absolutely anything you want. A small growl builds in his throat, and Leo traces the cold bottle after every place his finger touched only moments ago, starting with my clavicle down my chest, belly, and when he gets to my pussy, he kneels to have a better look as he rims my opening with the beer bottle. If my dark brown skin were any lighter, I'd bet he could see my entire body flush. And he does everything he said he would. He sips the beer with his eyes closed, then reaches to place the bottle on the counter again before returning to his knees in front of me. With two fingers, he spreads my lips wide and just stares. I'd be self-conscious if he weren't staring at me like a starved lion at a gazelle. Baby, he groans out. Your clit is so full, I can practically see it quiver. I laugh. I laugh because I imagine every rapid palpitation of my heart redirecting my blood flow to that part of my body. Of course, it's pulsing, and of course, he can see it. What? He asks, peering up at me through water droplets latched onto his thick lashes while I finish the last of my laughter. I run a hand through his hair like I've been dying to, and despite his thick fingers having me spread apart and my clit being exposed to the air and hot water like this, the moment is tender. He closes his eyes and smiles as my fingers massage his scalp. He opens his eyes again and says, I will not ask because you said not to, so I'm telling you, I'm going to take care of this for you. I nod and his hands leave my body. I shut off the water and Leo gets out first, grabbing a towel to wrap around my arms. When I'm snug, he pulls the towel to bring me close to him, and that's when he kisses me. Kisses me like he misses me, like he's missed me all this time. He kisses me like every time he went to bed, he thought of me just as I was thinking of him. It's wet and sloppy in the best way, his tongue licking and tasting my lips, my teeth, my tongue. It tastes like me and beer and him, 
Hungry kisses that tell me everything I need to know about how he feels, how he's felt maybe even all this time. Completely dry, he leads me to my bed and lays me down in front of him. He spreads my knees as far as they will go, my skin pebbles with a shiver, and he takes a step back to admire my body. You're perfect, he whispers, stroking himself slowly. With each stroke, he devours me with a dark glare that reaches such depths within me, my belly clenches. Leo kneels next to the bed and wraps his arms under my thighs to drag my ass to the edge of the mattress. Biceps curl around my thighs in twin hugs. His tongue finds my throbbing clit, and I see stars. They're slow and gentle licks that tease when he pulls back for a second before licking again. Gentle circles that widen in diameter until he is no longer touching it before swirling back to the center. Up and down licks with the flat of his thick tongue that feel like a hug to my pussy. And targeted firm licks with the point of his tongue in all the right places. After long minutes, his eating becomes frenzied and he sucks on my clit between licks, sending me into a free fall I could never have imagined. I grind against his face, feeling his nose pressed to my mound. And the man groans between my legs, sending vibrations to my core. I come and I come, and I come, and I come, and I can't stop coming. When my hands dig into his hair and pin his face to me, I'm not even sure he has an airway any longer, but he keeps suckling my clit as I ride out the longest orgasm of my life. The spasms come quickly with the aftershock of it all, and he eases his mouth off me after tenderly kissing my labia like he's giving thanks for divine nourishment. Leo, I pant his name out. That was insane. He kisses up my belly and comes up to kiss my mouth. You taste like heaven, he says between kisses then surprises me by dragging me up the bed and placing a pillow behind my head. The loss of his heat and his body, his mouth and his touch are all unbearable when he breaks away from me to get the covers over both of us. He flips me on my side, and I feel his erection between my ass cheeks. One of his hands tucks my hair to the side so he can gently kiss the side of my neck, then drops to my waist to press my back flush to his torso. I clench, anticipating his intrusion as he enters me, but it never comes. I wiggle my ass and press harder against his erection, making him groan. Behave, Kami, he warns, but it's playful. You aren't going to fuck me? I ask, not at all sounding pouty. His response is to kiss the back of my neck again before saying, If you're a good girl and get some sleep, when you wake up, you can do whatever you want to me. I'm not sleepy, I try to protest. Mi vida, I want you to rest. You were so swollen and achy, I knew you wouldn't sleep if I didn't take care of you first. Mi vida. Mi vida. Mi vida, he called me mi vida. I smile. That's what papi used to call mami. Mi vida. My life. I'm about to wiggle out of his hold so I can turn to face him, but his grip tightens around me, holding me in place. Sleep, he says a little more sternly. But I want to take care of you too. You can, Kami. I promise you can do whatever you want after you've slept. Now stop arguing. You've always been so bossy. And you've always been in a squinkla. I'm silent for a moment, my lids slowly getting heavy. You asked mommy not to tell me you were home, didn't you? Shh, mi vida, he says. We'll talk after you have at least a few hours of sleep. I know you did. You don't have to tell me. 
It's the last thing I say before falling asleep. It's my phone that wakes me up. I'm still naked and flush against Leo's skin. I peel myself away from him and reach for my phone, my personal phone. Hello? I say. Camila, can you come back? You've got to be kidding. Carolina? Wait, this is my personal phone. Why is Carolina calling me on my personal phone? I shoot up to a sitting position, startling Leo, and he springs up next to me. What is it? He asks, and I hold my hand up to silence him. What is it, Carolina? I ask. She's okay, I need you to hear that first. It's mommy, isn't it? I ask, jumping out of bed and running to my closet for clothes. My dad brought her in because her chest was feeling tight. She's fine. She's stable. Dr. Lopez is running tests now. By the time I'm done getting dressed, Leo has finished doing the same, and he already has my car keys in his hands. Thank you, I say this time, knowing I'm too panicked to drive. Leo nods, takes my hand in his, and drives me back to the hospital. Welcome back. Hey. So that was the first installment of Palpitation. Like I said, make sure you go enter this week's giveaway for a signed copy of Diagnosis Amor. And if you liked what you're hearing so far, go check out the rest of the Heartland Metro Hospital series. You can jump in at any time. They're all happily ever afters and they're all standalone. So go grab them up. All right. Tell them what to do. Fuck your day up. Make today your bitch. Don't be a dick. Bye, guys. Bye. Read me romance, read, read me romance, read me romance, read, read me romance. You could take a look in a book that's fine, or you could sit back, relax, and unwind and read me romance, read, read me romance.